Hello and welcome to my new video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lex. And today is gonna be a little bit different from normal. I'm doing both a speed build and a tutorial of sorts. This area I'm walking around in now is, it's just an experimental build that I did. We're just gonna tear it down because I need this side of my island. This is the back left corner of Lorien where I intended to place Bob's house. And today I'm going to build a sunken pathway. This is definitely inspired by crossing.callisto on Instagram. Ani created the sunken pathway and it is absolutely genius. Um, that's all there is to say, really. Thank you so much to my members. Uh, I really appreciate you all. And if you're not a member and would like to become one, the link is in the video description. We're gonna have a little bit of structure to today's video because of course I've got to start by cleaning up everything from this experimental build I was doing. Um, it is kind of sad to watch it all disappear when I just built it, but also, I didn't really actually intend to keep it up anyway. I was just like, hmm, what could I fit back here? And that was the initial thing, you know, like some kind of cliff top view at the back. But I am so excited to try the sunken pathway. Here I am finally terraforming. We've got the terraforming shovel out, we're going. I really enjoy flattening. I feel like, so one thing that this initial flattening project really shed light on for me is the fact that the most satisfying thing to do in Animal Crossing New Horizons is to chop down trees just one after the other ones that you don't have to shake first so like as you can see in this build I used bamboo trees and coconut trees so I could just go one after the other and cut these babies down and when I tell you it was the most fun I've had in Animal Crossing in like months I had so much fun literally just chopping down these trees. I am anti-deforestation in real life, but if you need some stress relief, I highly recommend just planting like a dozen rows of trees at Animal Crossing and just letting loose. It definitely helps you if you have a gold ax or multiple axes so that you don't have to worry about it breaking, but yeah, this was so much fun. I can't even express to you how much I enjoyed this. I feel like a kid again. I feel like some kind of little rambunctious kid because that's the most enjoyable thing I've experienced recently. Anyway, I did find a lost item and I used the investigate feature and it said the item had attitude. So I guessed it was Deirdre's. And I think this is the first time I've ever gotten a guess like that right. It was Deirdre's, it was her bag. I just, wow, I'm so impressed with myself. I was excited to see what Deirdre has given us. It said open track jacket and I couldn't picture that. So I'm just gonna put it on because I'm also wearing the same outfit as I wore in my last video. Look at that, I'm like a totally new person. I feel like Vector if he wore blue instead of green or whatever, orange. Why did I say green? Anyway, that was embarrassing for me. I next went ahead and got rid of this river. I did have to time travel a day to get rid of the bridge that had been here, but I just cut that out. I figured you all would um, enjoy being spared multiple Animal Crossing loading screens. That's like my biggest pet peeve right now for Animal Crossing is the loading screens. They're so intense. They're so long and for what? For what are they so long? But yeah, I have to time travel several times in this build because, you know, as you can expect with the sunken pathway, if you'll notice in the picture, there are two inclines and we're going to have to time travel for both of those. Also, I am going to place a villager house here. Um, for those of you who have been following my streams, you probably know that I intend to put Bob's house in this back left corner and I figured sunken pathway or not, we might as well. Go ahead and do that. Also, do you like this terraforming technique I developed doing two rows at the same time to speed it up? I sped this up so much. I can't even- this build is the longest speed build I've ever done. Um, the raw footage was almost exactly three hours long. That's where we are right now, by the way, in the top left corner. That's how much cliff I've built up from the ground, from nothing. At this point, I think I was already an hour in just from having to terraform this cliff. I decided to outline where I want Bob's house to go. Um, as I was saying, despite the sunken pathway, I thought that his house would go really well here and he deserves a beautiful view. This is me forgetting how to do the dimensions for a four x four house. I literally, what am I doing? I fixed it, it's fine, I can count again. But wow, that was another embarrassing little um, 
Embarrassing little brain fart for me, huh? Sorry, I was taking a breather for a second. Anyway, here I am marking where I want the incline to start in relation to Bob's house. So that line of stone is where the top of the incline will be. So here I am just clearing this out. I'm gonna mark the area where the incline will go on the ground. So it'll be two by three tiles. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start outlining the sunken pathway itself. So I don't have to like re-break these, these, what? <laughs> these cliffs later. Um, I did use Ani's screenshot as a reference, like trying to figure out how long I wanted it to be because I did want it to be fully visible at this angle. Also, that's another tip for you um, in this little tutorial. Uh, definitely check your camera angles as you're building to make sure that it's going to be an area that you like in photographs as well. I feel like it can be discouraging even if you love a build when you make it to open the camera app and be like, oh, it looks ugly from this angle. It probably doesn't look ugly regardless, but you know, it's helpful to think about that while you're building so you don't disappoint yourself at the end. I know I do that quite frequently. Anyway, yeah, once you've got your pathway lined out, this is where the other incline is going to go, the backwards incline. Here I am back to terraforming because if you'll notice in the screenshot, we need a lot of water. So that means a lot of land mass on either side of this sunken pathway. It's going to be so beautiful. I am so excited to have this sort of inspired build on my island. I was basically just trying to figure things out like dimension wise I wasn't sure if I had left enough room for water ideally you would put your sunken pathway a little bit further away from the edge of your island I didn't have a lot of options because Lorien is getting pretty full I didn't really have another open space like this but it ended up working out I also went ahead and cut some little alcoves out of this pathway so it didn't seem so rigid you'll notice that Ani did that as well um I thought that was clever to make it feel more open and it definitely worked like now this is a dynamic sunken pathway i went ahead and tried to lay out some pathing as well but spoiler alert i do change it once i figure out what i want to do with the water terraforming here i thought it was really clever the way ani did the water terraforming for this area so here i am trying to figure that out and then I was like, okay, it has to be curved here. So what are we gonna do for this pathing? Spoiler alert, I just keep it very simple with a different, a different tile from the bricks. How creative. I am a creative problem solver. Next is just carving out your water. Um, I think the most difficult thing about this part is making sure you leave enough land around your sunken pathway for it to feel decorated and dynamic the way Ani's does. Um, that was actually pretty fun for me getting to shape the land because you aren't really thinking about the water shape at this point. You might be using the waterscaping tool, but you're really thinking about the way you're carving that out of the land, not really what the water itself is looking like at this point. Um, that kind of comes later. You can shape your water however you want. I did decide to leave some tiny little mini islands when I was doing my decor so that there would be, you know, like flowers floating on the water. You can make decisions like that as you go. But this part was definitely the part I had to pay the most attention to, making sure that I shaped the land in a way that would be not boring. I don't know how else to say it. Um, and because so... Since I decided to put the water so close to the edge of my island, I do just make this a really long waterfall on this side. I felt like it would be better to have the water continue flowing because you can see the edge of the water when you're standing in the sunken pathway and doing the angled camera view. Here's my first little flower island as well. But yeah, here you can see me kind of figuring out the shape for this side. I'll let you chill with this new leaf music for a bit.
So here I am still just kind of shaping the land around the bridge. I mean, not the bridge, the uh, sunken pathway. And I'm gonna break out some real terraforming technique here. Look at me going down the middle so that none of them curve, none of the little paths round. I am killing the game. Uh, I do decide at this point that I wanna have a little tree island. So here I am creating that to give the water a little bit more um, texture, I guess, so it doesn't feel so plain. Um, I wanted to say something else. What was I gonna tell you? I don't know. Here is the map now that I've done mo the, wow, the terraforming. <laughs> uh, this is pretty much how it's gonna stay looking. I am gonna use custom pathing here, so. It doesn't really change much from this. I went ahead and did the time traveling to place the inclines and everything. Look at this overhead view. I thought it was so pretty. Like the way the water's moving and everything. I don't know why this shot just made me so excited for the finished product. Here it is with the inclines installed and here is Bob's house. I totally forgot to edit his house exterior before the build was complete, but that's okay. I'll go back at some point later and change the exterior for his home so that it matches. Also, at this point, we were already two and a half hours in, so it took two and a half hours to do all of the terraforming and everything, and less than 30 minutes to decorate it all. That's just wild to me. I mean, I spent so much time just constructing cliffs. Being an Animal Crossing content creator is so fun. Another thing about me, this is like a personal flaw, but I always do everything in one sitting. All of my speed builds one sitting. I never like pause and come back to them later. Like I did this entire three hour build in one, I was just sitting in one spot for three hours, powering through this. I've always been like that. In college, it didn't matter if I had a two page essay or a literal 12 page essay. I did it in one sitting. I can't moderate. I'm like, it's impossible for me to moderate my time and my responsibilities. So, you know, I could fix that, but it was, it was a ride doing all this at one time. Um, but yeah, that is to say it took me, you know, three hours to create this, but it only takes you like one second to drop a like on the video. It's super encouraging when you all interact, like every comment makes my day. So I'd love to hear from you all what you think of this build, whether you're gonna make it on your island, you know, whatever. Now that I'm done with the terraforming, I guess the tutorial aspect is done. So now you just get to watch me um do my thing. You just get to watch me decorate, figure out how to shape the land in a way that I really like. Or not shape the land literally, that was terraforming, but you know, shape this area. It took a lot of little technical things like that, like I would have to edit the land and water in order to fit things that I wanted to fit, but as you go, you'll figure out exactly what you want in each area and how to best fit it. It was mostly placement for me. I kept wanting to place things in the halfway spot. You know how you can move it like half a tile? That's what I kept wanting to do, and you can't do that if there isn't a tile for you to stand on. It's so like right there, what I just did. I had to edit the land so that I could move the log stakes forward half a tile. It, it was a lengthy process, but I'm really proud of how it came out in the end. So I will let you all again, enjoy this new leaf music and watch this space really come together with decor. I feel like decor really livens it up. Like the terraforming can be pretty, but you can't really visualize what it looks like as a completed area until there's complete pathing and you know what the theme for the area is going to be. So enjoy.
At this point, I decided I wanted to expand the water so that I could make a waterfall on this side of the sunken pathway. I'm just gonna extend the cliffs over there to the end over here. That way I can have a little waterfall. It'll look great, it'll be so fun. Um, I think something I've noticed lately about my gameplay is that despite the fact that I used to really enjoy decorating, like I could decorate an island all day, I've come to really prefer terraforming. I feel like decorating is where I struggle the most these days, whereas with terraforming I just feel like there's so much possibility and it's so fun. I guess that also plays into, I don't know how many of you have already heard this from me, but one of the reasons that I struggle with burnout in Animal Crossing is literally just item acquisition, having to collect all of the items that I need to decorate my island the way I want to and Happy Home Paradise really emphasized that for me because I could play Happy Home Paradise all day you know you just get it's like a catalog you know it's just like Harv's Island you get to use whatever items you want and seeing that ability outside I don't know I think it just really ruined part of the game for me because I was like wow it would be so much easier for me to finish islands to really put my heart and soul into decorating if I could do that on my main island so yeah, anyway, all of that is to say that lately I've been really enjoying terraforming. Like, I just feel like it's so fun. I really didn't appreciate it enough back when the game first came out that it was so intimidating to me. I was like, mmm, shaping the land is kind of a lot. But here lately, yeah, that's been the most enjoyable aspect for me It's just knowing that I can do whatever with the cliffs and water. I can just go crazy. So at this point, I'm very close to being done with decorating. I do time travel one day at a time so I can stop a couple of the trees at the growth stage I want them to be at. So that's something to look forward to. There will be a tiny bit of tree layering. Um, I feel like it's also important to note that at this point in the build, I had devolved greatly in real life and I was watching Barbie movie edits on YouTube the entire time I was building this part of the build i am obsessed like i don't know how many of you have just sat down and watched barbie movie edits they're hilarious literally just watching the most absurd like out of context clips from barbie movies is getting me through june i don't i can't recommend it enough with that, the build is complete. I am so excited to share it with you. I once again just want to remind you that this entire build is inspired by crossing.callisto on Instagram. You can also find Ani on Twitter. I will link their social media below as well as the original post. But here we are. This is my take on the sunken pathway. I knew as soon as I saw the build 
that I wanted to have something like it on my island. Again, I'll edit Bob's house so that it fits a little better into this aesthetic, but I'm really happy with it now. I managed to get the water right so that it doesn't, like, you can't see the sand of the beach even though we're super close to the beach. So yeah, I hope that this tutorial slash speed build was helpful for you. I think a lot of people thought that this build included modding, but no, it's completely 100% possible just with you and your Switch, you can build this on your island. And yeah, make sure that you credit Ani if you do. Don't credit me, this was not my original idea. Give Ani the credit that they deserve. Thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate you for staying and enjoying the video. So I'll see you in the next one and yeah, have a beautiful day.